Hi there, it's Jack, the deputy editor of Forest Journal magazine, and I'm here on the, the very busy Timberwolf stand on the second day of APF with Chris. Chris, how's the show going? The show's going brilliantly, thank you very much. Yes, um, it's really good to see so many people out at a show, mm. actually in person. It's been a long time coming, and it's uh, yeah, very heartwarming to see so many people here, and mm. such a busy stand for us. Yeah, first time in four years as well, because I think there's been such a demand for folks to get out and about and see new machines. Absolutely. I think uh, people have been just looking forward to getting out and just doing what they used to do and, and a bit more normality to their lives so yeah and like I say it's been a good show so far very busy stand um, hopefully it continues. Let me continue. They've got obviously a lot on the sand we'll get to this one here which is the main talking point but what else are you showing what's on the sand for people to see? So we've got pretty much the, the full range of Timberwolf machinery starting with the 1375 which is a three inch gravity fed chipper um, all the way through to a variety of eight inch chippers, petrol and now this latest the, the diesel hybrid offering from ourselves which we're launching at the show today, a um, variety of six inch um, road towable PTO and self propelled track machinery as well so a bit of everything really. Yeah perfect. Well this is obviously the main event the hybrid can you just talk me through this what, what is this what we're looking at and, and what's the machine? So in principle um, with the transition to Euro stage 5 emissions Timberwolf took a decision um, during that transition to move primarily to petrol machinery for an eight, its 8 inch product whilst in the background we've been developing a diesel hybrid we took a decision for various reasons not to go to above 19 kilowatts uh, after treatment so on and so forth based on the duty cycle of the machines so we looked at alternatives and over a good number of years we've been developing a mild hybrid technology that allows us to give superior performance but only out of an 18 and a half kilowatts diesel engine so no after treatment um, no need for blue or anything like that um, but basically this is a powertrain that at peak will generate up to 62 horsepower mm -hmm. using a combination of an 18 and a half kilowatt diesel engine mm -hmm. Three cylinder Kubota diesel engine and a 32 kilowatt um, motor generator bolted in series. And the energy storage, the energy management is using a series of supercapacitors. Mm. Through various iterations um, that we've gone through from around about 2017 all the way till now, we've played with batteries, supercapacitors, so on and so forth. For our application, we settle on something that gives the best performance at the most reasonable price that we could actually achieve this technology for. So it's something new, innovative and ultimately it's more about the direction Timberwolf is taking, reducing emissions, trying to create more sustainable products for our market sector than just necessarily this one piece in itself. So in due course you'll see us starting to launch new products both with this technology but also further emissions redu reducing technology as well. Although at the moment this will run on diesel, um, it is actually compliant from an HVO point of view so it'll, it can run on fossil free um, fuel sources as well. So yeah, it's a good step for us, a good piece of technology. A chap called Jeff Haynes, who used to work for Timberwolf, he started this under my direction back in about 2017. Mm. He's now moved on and set his own company out with Dragon Equipment. Um, but we've evolved a long way from that point in time. We've made a partnerships, collaboration with um, a company called InMotion, who produced the GSM. We worked with um, a company called SEC, who are the supercapacitor manufacturer for these, to try and find the best the most appropriate technology that we can actually do to bring into the product. But I have to take my hat off to my engineering product development team that they've actually thoroughly embraced this, the programming, the testing, the development, um, meeting all the compliance requirements as well. It's, it's been a labour of love, I think is the best way to describe it, but it's generated, a, I think, a really superior product for us. Okay, so just a wee bit in terms of how this is in, in the real world, in the real world environment, but first and foremost, where has, it been, where has it been used, where has it been tested? So it's been tested, we work a lot with um, some of our um, local tree surgeons um, around and about us, but also we have some brand ambassadors who we've worked with as well. Um, as you can see, Mark's just finishing off a demonstration with the hybrid over there. Um, it's, it's just basically having gone from over a, almost a, well, two years for this but five year period with the development of hybrid, a hybrid powertrain just getting enough hours on a machine to prove out the technology deal with particularly the software software programming side of things as well and get it to be um, you know a good solid robust product that's going to stand the test of time in the marketplace which again is part of the reason for choosing supercapacitors they're particularly suitable for the sort of environment we're working in um, they're tough they're rugged um, there's no issues from a, um, a lithium-ion point of view in there as well so it's good for our application particularly with the duty cycles that we're running through with the no stress windows on the machine so we've gone through a, a good period of refining this to get it to a good good point for a product 
And in terms of this, compared to say the more obviously traditional uh, models, how does it compare in terms of both of running costs and the output it can manage? So uh, the idea with this is that, um, again, as I said, one of the easy things is that we have no after treatment. There's no DPF on this at all. It's just sticking at a sub 19 kilowatt power plant for stage five compliance. Um, but with that comes the benefits of. Um, less prescriptive requirements from fluids, um, even fuel source, um, but the maintenance costs are, are simply reduced as well, which is proven within the automotive sector with the hybrid powertrain. Um, fuel consumption is reduced, um, emissions are reduced simply by using a smaller power source from an internal combustion engine perspective, but just using it more efficiently with the overall duty cycle of the machine. So the clever bit ultimately is down to the programming, and that's what the, the team have done a very good job of. Um, and hopefully you'll see that in the demonstration of the machine is that it's it's playing with the duty cycle and working out how to optimise that with this combined powertrain. The big benefits you get from um, the electric motor, the instant torque, um, and you get a high level of torque that comes in out. So the, the machine itself can respond incredibly quickly to recovery of the energy in the rotor to just get a, a good, well, well performing fluid kind of machine basically. Yeah, and you mentioned just just gonna more generally, this is the this is the starting point. Yes. What's next? What do you, what do you see the developments being over the next few years? So ultimately, our ambition as a business is to move towards zero emissions machinery. But we've taken a view that um, we had to start and do this progressively. So the first big stepping stone for us is uh, the underpinning technology that development is behind this, moving to a, a safety compliant PLC, CAN bus technology on the chipper, and getting all of that in place. But and allows us really a lot of refinement and development of, as I said, the no-stress window, the technology itself. The next thing we're planning to do is, is introduce this powertrain on other models, um, but ultimately we are looking to develop um, a real-world usable zero emissions chipper. Um, that's really where we're trying to strive to get to, but something that works for the customer without the added complications of the charging cycles and other bits and pieces that people have to deal with at the present point in time. So it's it's a bit of a long-term goal, but it's one that we're working on very hard behind the scenes, so we'll be bringing out new products with this technology and even lower emissions technology further forward.